So I'm going to read through Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. This is in preparation for your Edexcel IGCSE English Literature exam, paper one. So I haven't annotated the title like I normally do because it's the first line of the poem, so you'll see more information in a moment. Um, but in summary, the poem is, a, is Dylan Thomas basically um, pleading for his father, you, well, actually commanding his father, but really I think in essence he's pleading him to, um, to not resign himself to death, at least not to do so without a fight. Um, so it's clear that Dylan Thomas is actually finding it really difficult to accept his father's impending death. And this is, I, this poem is a way of him handling that. Um, so the first stanza, do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. So the first line we have, um, which is the title of the poem as well, the imperative. So there's, um, it gives a commanding tone um, where he's he's commanding his father to resist death. Um, but this is repeated. I've put a purple box around it because you'll notice that this line is repeated throughout the poem. Um, and I think the repetition of this line doesn't just show that he's commanding his father. I think it really reveals um, Dylan Thomas's desperation for his father to continue living. Um, and good night is a metaphor or a euphemism for death. The fact that he uses a euphemism rather than act, literally saying death, I think um, supports this idea that he's finding it difficult to accept this impending death. Um, but it's quite interesting that he uses the word good to describe death, good night. So I think he does realise that death would mean the end of suffering for his father. Um, so it's, it's interesting that he says good night, despite the fact that he's um, begging his father to resist it. Um, he says that old age should burn and rave. Um, the assonance here, so we've got the er uh sound in burn and the a sound in rave. Um, that elongates those words. And then as well as the plosive of the b for burn, um, I just think that makes those two words sound even more emotive and, and powerful, as well as the fact that it's bold imagery. You can imagine this old man literally fighting against death. Um, and again, we have euphemism again or, or metaphor for death, close of day. Um, a repetition of rage, rage. Again, violent imagery, this bold imagery of just imagining the father fighting against death and dying of the light again, metaphor and euphemism. Um, so what you'll notice for the remainder of the poem, um, actually, no, sorry, for the, for the next few stanzas, I've circled wise men, good men, wild men and grave men. So his next four stanzas focus on different types of, of men. Um, I think the point in that is to highlight um, how universal death is, that it affects all kinds of men, despite um, the lives that they've lived. That's one thing that they all have in common, that they all experience death. That's eventually. Um, and I th he, he does that to encourage him to fight as well. Look at all these different men, all the different lives they've le led, um, and they still fight to the bitter end. I think it's him trying to encourage his father to fight just like they do. So though wise men at their end know dark is right, because their words have forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Um, so for me, I think wise men is really, he's talking about academics, intellectual men. Um, and he basically says that they accept death is right. They completely appreciate that it has to be a, a part of your life, obviously, at the, the very end, but it has to come. They, they might, it might even mean that they, 
they accept that it's right when they're old. Um, but despite that, despite the fact that they appreciate that it is part of our lives, it's inevitable. Um, because their words have forked no lightning. Um, so I think here, um, he's talking about men who were probably very capable in their lives, being um, intellectually capable. As they come closer to death, do they look back and regret that their words, their capabilities left no impact? Um, lightning leaves an impact. It's impressive to, um, to watch. Um, and they and their words haven't left anything like that. So I think this is about men who had kind of great capabilities when they're dying, maybe looking back and regretting the fact that they didn't have the impact they could have. Um, and because of that, they do not go gentle into that good night. I found this stanza the most difficult and please remember that um, this is all up for interpretation. I'd be really interested to hear your interpretation of this stanza. I found I spent a lot more time on this stanza than any of the other stanzas. Um, so now we're focused on good men. Um, I question what he means by good men. I, I don't think there's one in, interpretation of that. And I'll, I'll come back to this in a moment of what I thought it might be. Um, the last wave by crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Um, so I, I thought the last wave by was quite ambiguous, but I, I thought it probably was a metaphor for, again, them coming to the end of their life. Like our life comes in waves and this is kind of the, the very last wave of their life. Um, and again, there's this regretful tone of what might have been. Um, so they're obviously looking back at their life again towards the end. And they wonder, um, they think that their frail deeds may have danced in a green bay. Green connotes fertility. So I wondered if that was linked to opportunity and whether these men look back and think, God, I, I could have had a better life had I had the opportunity, had I had that green bay. Um, so that's kind of what I read, um, thought about it. But it'd be interesting to see what you thought. The other thing I thought about with it being good men, um, Dylan Thomas lived through two wars. I wondered if he was referring to soldiers, um, especially those soldiers who um, who potentially served in both wars or gave up a, a huge chunk of their lives um to war they wouldn't have had the opportunities they wouldn't have had the experiences um that potentially they feel like they they should have because of war so i wondered if you could link it to that um but because of that because they have that regret and they feel like they haven't 100 percent fulfilled their lives they rage rage against the dying of the light light they keep fighting to live And then he focuses on wild men. You could argue that Dylan Thomas was a wild man. So um, maybe he was um, reflecting on his own life here. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late, they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Um, so with wild men, I think of men who um, are dead of devils, live their life um, taking risks. Um, Caught and sang the sun in flight, I think is a metaphor for living your life without boundaries. Um, but despite that, time still passes by. So they learn too late. They grieved it on its way. So it's almost like before they even stop to realise life is over. It wasn't enough time. They had so much fun. They didn't realise they were almost kind of grieving their life while they lived because time passed so quickly um and because of that they don't go gentle into that good night and that's interesting because they lived their life they um took every opportunity but it's still not enough and they still fight to the bitter end um so grave men could be seen as two things is it serious men or dying men i think it's um i would 
well, it's not, there's not a right or wrong answer. I tend to think more of it as serious because we have this reference to being happy in the second line. Um, but obviously, in your exam, you need to show an appreciation of multiple interpretations anyway. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. I um, I don't know how, why I wrote that, the, so I've just replaced it with like. Um, so serious men close to their death who see with blinding sight. I think this is an oxymoron highlighting how physically you might decay but maybe actually you grow mentally um, in some way. So you might, um, for instance, lose your physical sight closer to death, but maybe you gain insight. Maybe you start seeing the world differently. So you, you kind of gain a, a different kind of sight. Um, and do you realize that blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay? Um, so do you, do serious men realize that um, they can still kind of burn with passion and be happy despite their physical decay. Um, and because of that, because they realise close to death, gosh, I could have I, I could have had so much more passion in my life and I, there's, still, there's still time yet. Do they um, live out till the bitter end again with burning passion? And then it becomes really clear that this is to his father. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Uh, so we have direct address, hence why we know it's to his father. Um, um, there on the sad height, I wondered if this was a metaphor. There's two ways of reading this, I think. Does it, does it mean because he's dying, it, he is at the height of his sadness? This is the um, kind of the worst part of his life. It can't get worse than this. Um, or sad height could mean kind of the edge of his life as well, which is sad in, its, in itself. Um, but just kind of realising that he's at this terrible moment in his life. Um and then he uses an oxymoron. Again, this is an imperative as well. He's kind of commanding him to curse. Bless me now with your fierce tears. So he's kind of saying, um, if you, if you swear, if you cry fiercely, that will kind of, that will bless me in the sense that I'll be happy to see that because you'll, you'll be full of passion. Um, but he ends that line with, I pray. So even though it's, it seems quite commanding, he's actually pleading. Again, I think that reminds us that he's really just desperate to hold on to his father um and then we end with those two lines that we've seen throughout the poem do not go gentle into that good night rage rage against the dying of the light i think it's just a final plea to his father to cling on to life for as long as possible um so form and structure this is called a villanelle villanelle um it's six stanzas five tercets so if you look five so three lines those are ter tercets and we have five stanzas the first five stanzas have three lines and then we've got one quatrain here so the final stanza has four lines and um, so that you'll notice um it's, there's a really strict structure um to this poem so um line one and three those lines that i so that i squared off with in purple repeat in alternations and i'm not going to go through this in great detail but where they are in the poem is it is in accordance with the the structure of a villanelle if that's exactly how it should be um so that's how strict the structure is of this this type of poem um, and then it ends with a final rhyme and couplet and also iambic pentameter throughout. So there's this great sense of control um, in the structure of the poem. I'd be really interested to, interested to hear what you think that means. Um, I wonder if it's his desire to control his father's actions or um, obviously when you're getting close to death or some if there's someone that you love that's close to death that must be a horrible time where you feel like things are completely out of your hands and um this real lack of control um so i wonder if dylan thomas found 
comfort in creating something that was so controlled? Is this his way of um, trying to feel like he has some control over the situation when in reality he has no control? Um, 